Old Donkey Kong Jr. cereal is part of this complete breakfast. It tastes like fruit and it's lots of fun. It's wild with fruit flavor. Donkey Kong Jr. So we're back here, and I have my iron set to wool setting with steam. I have some craft paper, and I have the Donkey Kong Jr. box that's been completely opened up. What I want to do now is I want to iron it flat. I don't want to put the iron directly on here because I don't want to melt any of the varnish onto the iron and make it stick. So I'm going to put the craft paper on here, and I'm going to iron through the craft paper. I'm just gonna use it like so. I'm just put some heat, some pressure on there. The steam will seep its way through the craft paper. We get to the box. See, see the steam over here? The steam's getting through. Since it's only on the wool setting, let me adjust this little fire. It's never going to melt anything. It's just heating it up. I'm put some pressure on it with the steam. And I'm just trying to flatten out the box to get started with. Before we do any kind of repairs or restorations or anything, I want the box to at least be flat. So take that. So we flatten that side out some. And as you can see, you can see the steam. That's why I got the towel here. And I'm going to do the other side too. Now this side, I don't have to use the craft paper if I don't want on this side because it's just the regular paper. As long as the glue doesn't get too sticky. So let's just see what happens here. I just don't want to have the iron stick to the paint or the ink on the other side. So. What I am working on right now, as I said, is I just want to flatten everything out as much as possible. Put a little bit of pressure on it like that if I want. I'm not going to get rid of these wrinkles. They're basically in here to stay. But I can get rid of the curves and the creases. And such. I might take the temperature up a little higher. I'm going to go up to cotton. It doesn't seem like it's getting hot enough for what I wanted to do. side again. Turn it up a little higher. I got it on cotton high now. I think that works a little better. I think cotton's a better temperature. Yeah, it seems a lot flatter. Yeah, it's warmer too. So let's roll it over on this side. Mm -hmm. Come on. 
here. And the reason why I want to use a steam too is the steam helps loosen up the paper fibers so that they can take a new shape when they're forcing the heat on them. I don't know if you can see the steam coming out, but we got some nice steam coming out now. I'm going to do one more time on the other side. I probably don't have to wipe up the excess like that. I just don't want to be a puddle for it to sit in. And as you can see, or maybe you can't see, but it should be obvious that the steam is getting through the craft paper down to the box. So there we go. Now I'm going to let this just sit here and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it one more time, but I'm going to press it right now. To do that, I'm going to heat it up again. I'm going to go slower. Steam it up good. Let's try that without it hanging up next time. One more time. This time, let's lift it up differently. <laughs> what I'm gonna do is, I got this piece of tempered glass right here, which is very heavy, and two big heavy books on top of it. And I'm gonna let it sit there for a bit and let it press out. All right, so now, and what we're going to do now is we're going to repair some of these tears in here. Now if you recall what I said is I am not restoring this back to perfection. I am fixing it so that it's not torn up. It's still going to have all of its imperfections and scratches and cuts on it. Now what I'm going to do is because this is like a non-destructive way of doing it is I'm going to repair the inside using just straight masking tape these tears. So you got a tear right here. I'm just going to get that in there really good. Rub it a lot to activate it. I got a tear right here. This is a big tear on the front of the box. And I'm going to do something else on the other side too. You'll see when I get there. This is on the inside. So I'm going to take a piece that will fit there. I'm just going to again go over there. This is like a a brace, a cast, or a patch. Something that's just going to hold it together. And I rub it and rub it to make it... So we've got a tear there. And I rub the tape to make it so that it really adheres well. Warm it up. And it really adheres well. Looks like the only other tear I got is right here. It's a complex one that goes that way and that way. So what I'm going to do is do this side first. Then I'm going to do this side right after. I'm going to here. And 
the nice thing about this masking tape is it basically blends in with this cardstock. do on the other side you'll see in a moment it's kind of interesting. Now I suppose if you have enough damage on it, you could just lay a whole sheet of paper right across it and just repair the whole thing. I thought about that, and I may end up having to do that with this accent to see how that works. But the problem with that is then I would have to apply glue, and I'm going to do my best not to apply glue except where the glue is needed, right there. See, yeah, that's pretty weak. I want that never to break. So I'm just going to fix that one too. So yeah, now we repaired all the tears in the back. Is this a tear or that? That's just a hole. You see that none of the tape is visible from the front. Now we're going to do something else here. I'll set up and we'll show you what that is. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little mess here. No. I'm going to <laughs> take some Mod Podge, pour a little bit in your bowl here. It's kind of thick as you can see. Probably shouldn't have used my finger because now my finger's going to be sticky. I'm going to take the Mod Podge. It's got water in it. Let's just squirt some water in. Come on, squirt it. Come on. There we go. I'm going to dilute it up until it's really runny. Well, not really runny, but runny enough that it's not a paste anymore. See? It's like that, maybe a little bit more more water in there. Just a little bit more. That should be enough. So it looks like um, equal parts water and Mod Podge just to get it down to that nice creamy consistency. Let me go empty out my thing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to soak it up, suck it all up into here. that and clean up my table. I'm going to take my stuff here and I'm just going to pick which one do I want to fix first. Uh, this right here has some damage in it. So what I'm going to do, this right here is isopropyl alcohol. I'm going to spray some isopropyl alcohol along this crack here. What that does is it breaks up the surface tension and, but it doesn't do any damage to anything, then I'm going to put that on it and it will be able to soak in. So, a little bit of isopropyl alcohol right there. And I'm just going to put that there so it can soak down inside the crack. A bit over on this side over here. The alcohol will evaporate and this will soak down in. Now what I can do is I can take this little squeegee right here and I can just squeegee the excess out. Just watch the paper so that I make sure that I'm not going against the grain or against the tear. Take a little rag here, wipe the rest of it off. Put a little more pressure down on some of these. And let it dry. Now what the alcohol did, as I said, is the alcohol breaks the surface tension up so that this doesn't beat up on it and that it can soak down inside the paper. So once that dries, that would be very strong. I'm going, to, I'm going to do these two also. Get 
don't have to soak it, you just need a little bit of it, just enough to break the surface tension. And we don't need as much Mod Podge as I put on the other one. Just a little bit like that. Take my little squeegee to push it inside the crack. Like so. Then I'm going to take my Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer dish towel and just remove the excess. And that will dry. Now let's go down here. I could do this here. Also, see how that's got a lot of tear to it? I want to repair that. This is just a spray bottle that I got during the pandemic that I keep refilling with um, isopropyl alcohol. Back when everybody was paranoid and we couldn't get any hand sanitizers or anything, I discovered those little travel size spray bottles there and I filled them up with rubbing alcohol so that I could sterilize my hands all the time every time I came in and out of the store. Well, I never got COVID, so maybe it worked. So, see, see how I'm just pushing it? See how this one is like getting messy there. That is probably because it wasn't enough isopropyl alcohol in the one spot. But also what this Mod Podge is doing as it gets in there is it's strengthening the paper right there so that it's not weak anymore. And that one spot was torn. This Mod Podge is matte, it's not gloss, so it won't stand out and look strange like glossy. Like, like if you have tape on something, you can see it's tape because it's glossy. This won't do that because it's not gloss. So there we go, and I want to repair this one over here, this little tear. Even though it's inside and you don't see it, it's just going to fix it anyways. Now we have to let this dry overnight, and I'll work on the other ones too. All right, now the Zaxxon box is a mess. We also have a tab here in the video. Know. That actually belongs over here, so we'll be repairing that. But yeah, the Zaxxon box is a mess and it's going to take a lot of patching to put it back together. But it's obviously salvageable. Make sure there's no tape anywhere. I don't want any tape on here when I start hitting it with the iron.
And here we go. Now, as I said many, many times, I wasn't restoring, I was repairing. And it's hard to tell by video, but these are much solider now. They don't crush, they don't collapse. They're very stiff. They feel better than this one, the one that took the most damage. It's actually, I mean, I was going to replace the bottom, but I said, you know what, I'm not going to. They will actually will stand up with things in them now. Now when I send them back, he can stick his dad to pack in there and his manuals in here. And if he wants to seal the bottom, he can. Put them up on the shelf. What I would do if they were mine is I would put them in my shrink wrapper when I shrink wrap them just to lock them all in place and make them solid. That's what I would do with them. But that's up to him. There you go. Again, not restored, repaired. Or preserved, you might say. See, as you can see, look, just, just, just a point to that. This one took the most Mod Podge. This one is the one I did the most work on. And you can't see it. There's no glossy, like, it's covered in glue. There's no tape showing up. You got a little wrinkle right there. But all the tears are solid. This one is good. This one is good. All the tears, you see, this is, this is ripped here, and it's no longer ripped.